Well, yes, indeed, this attack in Beirut is the latest in the long history of violence in Lebanon's capital. Southern Beirut has been attacked by armed Sunni groups recently. In June 2014, a suicide bomber killed a security officer. Before that, a string of attacks were launched against Hezbollah across the country. Between July 2013 and February 2014, there were nine attacks on Hezbollah strongholds, most claimed by armed Sunni groups. Hezbollah has been fighting in Syria alongside the forces of President Bashar al-Assad. Broadly speaking, Lebanon's Sunni community supports the Syrian opposition. And I'm joined now by Olivier Gita, managing director of the consultancy firm Global Strat, and he's also a security and political risk analyst. Thanks for coming in to the studio. So My pleasure. I saw claiming responsibility for these terrible attacks. What, though, do you make of the way these attacks were in fact carried out? Look, the modus operandi uh, looks very much like uh, ISIS would like to do it. It was a, a motorbike uh, bombing and then when people were coming to the place, the second attack and there was a third suicide bomber that was supposed to uh, blow himself up and that was uh, arrested and stopped by people. Uh, so it was very meaningful in the way that it wanted to get to the level of uh, victims that we got because you have to remember since 2004 this is the bloodiest terror attack in Lebanon uh, and this is a country that has unfortunately uh, weathered a lot of terrorism and civil war in the past 40 years. Yeah a lot of people saying on social media this is Lebanon going back to its, its, its dark old days. Yes and no because what you have to remember is that it's for a lot of Lebanese it's an important conflict. It's not a conflict between Lebanese it's mostly a uh, Syrian war being imported within Lebanon. So it's not actually an internal conflict, whereas other conflicts within Lebanon have been internal. This is an external on, on the borders. Exactly. And the fact that it's Islamic State claiming responsibility and not a Lebanese Salafi groups like we had in the past is changing uh, the data and the view. Also, the fact that allegedly uh, two of the bombers were Palestinians and one was Syrian and no Lebanese per se were involved is also uh, putting things in, in context and hopefully will not trigger further violence between communities. But that doesn't mean that ISIS is not going to use that as just a launch pad to have more attacks in, in Shia neighborhoods. A lot of people again on, on social media that I've been reading have been saying, look, the area that was targeted, this suburb, it's not only a Hezbollah stronghold, lots of ordinary people live there, but the reality is it is a Shia neighbourhood, and, and I guess that's what's important. Very much so. I mean, uh, Islamic State has made no mystery about uh, targeting Shias, and they had made no mystery targeting Hezbollah. What is really surprising is that it didn't happen before, because we are coming after a lot of videos, a lot of... Uh, uh, audio tapes from uh, Islamic State saying we're going to hit Hezbollah uh, hardly in Lebanon. What sort of pressure, if any, is this going to put on Hezbollah? Presumably it's not actually going to deter uh, its operations, its movements within Syria. Right, that's a very good question because since the Syrian conflict started and Hezbollah has been sending a lot of their men, of their top commanders actually, to Syria, a lot of backlash within the Shiam community is happening because mothers are saying our sons are dying in Syria for a conflict that we have nothing to do with. So there's been uh, less popularity for Hezbollah w even within the Shia community. What could happen as well would be uh, the backlash of this attack saying, look, we were rendered defenseless because your top guys are in Syria and not defending us at home. So here you have a couple of issues that will most probably come to bite Hezbollah. Olivia Gita, thanks for your expertise. Thank you. Thank you.